What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is January 14th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video, I want to spend some time to talk about why I believe after looking at all of the data, all of the available resources that we have, why I believe Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies alike are set to reverse and go higher into 2020 and set up for new highs in 2021. We've got a lot of interesting things to take a look at, guys. If you like the video, please share it with a family or friend member because I think this is a very interesting time for cryptocurrency markets. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Taking a look across the board for the market, most cryptocurrencies are up in the green at the moment. We can see here, though, that a lot of cryptocurrencies are not keeping up with Bitcoin, but for the ones that are either keeping up with Bitcoin or outpacing it, we're seeing some of the larger caps. For example, we see Ethereum here up 6% outpacing Bitcoin. Along with that as well, EOS up 7.6%. Bitcoin Cash up 12.3%, as well as plays like Dash here up 28%, and Bitcoin SV up 44%. So what we're seeing here are some of the larger caps leading against Bitcoin here, which might be showing us, again, a shift in liquidity here towards some of the more riskier plays. And again, you tend to find that it's a stepping stone process going from Bitcoin to some of the larger cap altcoins down towards the mid caps and small caps. That's generally how the cycles work in crypto markets. Along with that as well, we can see here that over the last few weeks, we've been able to regain over $54 billion in cryptocurrency market cap across the board over the last few weeks since we set the bottom here in December of 2019. This is really good to see a good, uh, stable effort here as we saw over a, a course of a couple of months here where crypto markets were able to hold around that $200 billion figure, make it support, doubling from the bottom back here at around $100 billion. I'll go ahead and zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. We were able to double from support bet down here around $800 billion. And again, continue higher here for the cycle. We were overextended. We had a start correction compared to the last previous ones because we had one of the best rallies we had out of the accumulation phase, which was extremely small. So it makes sense why we had such a long-term correction. And then all coins as well, getting back, I think if I remember the math correctly, about uh, $19 billion in uh, market cap, if I'm no, sorry, $18 billion dollars in market capitalization from the low to the high here now outside of that as well if we just take a look at bitcoin's chart here a lot of the things are flashing positive for us i like the sideways price action that we had after a multi-month correction from back here during june during the summer when we peaked out near around fourteen thousand. it had over a 50 percent plus correction we pushed sideways and now we're having a healthy uptrend to the upside with decent levels of volume but the thing that really signals to me is that all of our indicators are flashing on the weekly. We're seeing the squeeze momentum indicator rising higher. We're seeing the MACD, the divergence closing in and looking like we might get across next week or the week after, which is really exciting. And then along with that as well, both of the lines coming up here in the stochastic RSI, which would mean that if we get that cross on the MACD, all five points are flashing for Bitcoin, meaning that it's a you know a clear sign in this case between the indicators that markets are moving higher. Again, it's not a guarantee that it's going to go uh, exorbitantly higher from here, but again, I think it's a signal that we're starting to reverse the trend here, and then over the next few months, we can start to move higher past the previous highs for 2019 and retest back up here towards the 20,000 mark, which we haven't tested since back here in 2017. So. Very exciting stuff from the sense of price. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the data science models, right? Now, we saw historically back here during the last uh, last cycle that when price came down on the two-year MA multiplier, it actually slightly dipped below and kind of correlated around the two-year uh, MA multiplier, so the two-year moving average multiplier. Well, if we take a look here, we can see Bitcoin did the exact same thing. Right. And again, we're talking about larger prices here in this case. So again, having a probably a little bit more of a divergence here, but still holding slightly below the indicator for some time and then moving back above it. And then right after we moved back up, we started to pick up into the cycle, picking up faster and faster momentum month by month. And again, very far and extended away from the five year multiplier, which again, right now is starting to dip down as it was over here, right? The red line. And we start to see it curving upward. OK. Along with that as well, we take a look at the MVRV Z score. Now, again, this is taking market cap minus realized cap and dividing it by the standard deviation of market cap. Long story short, we see historical similarities in this measurement between market cap and realized cap. We had had an exorbitant rally over two points as we did both times after exiting out of the accumulation phase, right? That's exactly what we got here. 
But again, because we had an overextended rally, we also had a pretty stark pullback here compared to the last few ones. However, it's very similar to what we saw back in the past, going below the one point range and then starting to tick back up as we enter into the cycle. Very similar to history. Along with that as well, the pullout multiple. Probably one of the clearest examples of historical similarities here, right? Usually topping out here a little bit above the two point range, coming back down here below one point, right? That's what we see historically after we've entered into the accumulation phase for Bitcoin down here, right? That's what happens post accumulation phase. Well, that's exactly what we got. And it shows us that we're really not that oversold right now in the sense of daily Bitcoin issuance, right? People are buying into the market right now. Now, another thing as well is taking a look at the stock to flow model. This is probably one of the most important things to focus on. We can see here that historically, if we take a look back here during the last cycle, right, we hovered below the line for the stock to flow model for a good amount of time. And then we started to tick upwards and start going parabolic as we started to enter into the next cycle. And as the color shifted here, after we had gone through the halving, then we started to see again, we enter into the, the yellowish to greenish phase when we start to enter into the bull market. That's what we're going to be looking for this next time around. Now, the important thing to focus on is not only that we're in a very similar situation, just hovering slightly below there, and we're starting to enter upwards as the color starts to turn purple, like it was last time. But along with that, speaking about the days away from the halving, we're less than 120 days away from the halving event. This is, roughly speaking, about four months, right? The expected date is May 13th of 2020. That could variably change. We could get a day before, day after, but it's pretty predictable. We're going to get it around that range sometime in mid-May, and we're really not that far away. Now, the important thing to consider about this, and again, I want to stress this. We've talked about it on a previous video, the importance of inflows and outflows in markets and why the halving event is not priced in just yet, okay? Because at, at the end of the day, what dictates a current asset price right here, right now, is the difference in buyers and sellers during the day. If there is a mass amount of buyers or a mass amount of sellers, it's going to have an outweigh on price. And these are people who are placing market orders. They want it to get filled, and they want to get filled now. So they want to sell a 1,000 Bitcoin, or they want to buy a 1,000 Bitcoin, right? So we can do some very simple math here, right? At the current price, in order for Bitcoin to maintain its price, we'd have to have an equal amount, generally speaking, of people buying at 8,500 and selling at 8,500. The problem is, is that buyers are going up against a lot. They're not only going up against sellers in this case in the market, uh, which should be seen as kind of usually most markets are usually just buyers and sellers. But along with that, you've got miners in the market who are constantly selling because it's difficult to operate profitably as a miner. And what you have to do is you literally have to sell the Bitcoin you mine and you basically are going after the 1% or 2% or possibly 3% that you can make depending on your energy costs for mining those Bitcoin after paying for your hardware and electricity. So we have between these two an equal, a very high level amount of pressure. And buyers, no matter what this number is between the sellers and miners, it has to be equal on the side for buyers just to maintain price. Well, we're starting to see price tick up, interestingly enough. So this means that we're getting more buyers on the market order side than we are on the sellers and the miners, right? And this either means miners aren't selling as much or buyers are just buying more. And the, the latter is more likely that buyers are buying more in anticipation for the halving. So we have more buyers coming in. But along with that, in a couple of months, we are going to have the halving event, okay? And this means that we are going to see a reduction of daily issued Bitcoin, right? These numbers are just factoring in here. This 1,800 Bitcoin is how many new Bitcoin are issued every single day and that miners are likely selling on the open market or through OTC markets. If that gets cut in half, that number drops down to a significantly lower level, down to 7.6 million. So if the buyers maintain themselves at those levels, as we see with crypto markets, buy side action continues as price is starting to move higher, right? As people start to kind of pile on, the, the word gets out about Bitcoin, markets are moving higher again. This number is either usually set to maintain itself, if not grow, then it starts to outpace the sell side. And that's what leads to these parabolic cycles in Bitcoin. It's why the halving model for Bitcoin is so effective at leading into these price cycles. We see it historically in the stock to flow model. I mean, if you take a look back at history, guys, you can see here, generally speaking, at this period of time, when we're this many days away from the halving event, you can see the colors change here on the stock to flow model. And afterwards, the cycle just kicks off. It's not that complex. It's very basic math. 
right? And I'm likely betting that, at least in my view, that the third time's a charm and we're going to continue to go on with this continued cycle that we've seen every single time when we enter into the having. okay? So that's just my view. You guys can view it in a different way. Again, less than 120 days away. Another thing to take into mind as well is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Right. So as we can see here, greed has been rising here, but we're nowhere near where we were back in June levels here. So I'd say that we've got a decent amount of time before we have to be worried about being overextended at the moment. And the last thing I want to talk about here is really talk about what's been going on in equity markets. Now, as we've talked about a lot on the channel, uh, ever since the yield curve inversion happened and a lot of the big recession headlines really started to hit back in 2019, I stressed a very key point here which was that uh, once we have the yield curve inversion, for those of you who may not know, it's it's when shorter term yields, in this case, are paying a higher term yield than longer term bond or, or treasury yields in this case for treasury notes in the United States, which is the US, uh, the US form of government bond. The interesting thing is that we tend to have a 15% market rally in some of the major indices like the S&P 500 from the point of the yield curve inversion. And sometimes it actually uh, turns out that we have about a year, a year and a half where markets still move higher. But the interesting thing is that we've had such a parabolic run-up in equities this year, that we've already outpaced that average to around 18% post-yield curve inversion. This is when we started back here. And that's just in the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NASDAQ here, we can see in that same period of time, we've gone up 21.65%. This is just absolutely crazy, guys. But I, I want to make it very clear here. My point here in focusing on equities is that we've still got a little ways to go. I really do believe, and I've come to the conclusion, that what we're going to likely see is a doubling on the value of the NASDAQ's va uh, value during the dot-com bubble, which was around 5,000. We're going to 10,000 NASDAQ, and along with that as well, we're likely going here to around 3,400 for the S&P 500. Right? Now, again, taking these things into mind here, Am I, am I saying to get bullish in equities? Not really. Uh, again, even though not only are we not guaranteed that these will happen, guys, that it's not any form of financial advice, for me, there's a very short potential reward profile for the risk you're taking on buying this late into the cycle where it's going near parabolic. You can see this, guys. This is what happens every single time. It's what happened during the dot-com bubble. Take a look back here at the NASDAQ. Does this look familiar, the vertical price action? It's pretty damn similar. <laughs> And it's because we're entering into the peak euphoria of a market cycle. If you take a look at some of the major tech companies over the last few weeks, Apple, going from here back in October of uh, 2019, has nearly added, I think it was around $250 billion in the course of a couple of weeks. And if they continue higher to doubling on top of 2200 at 3300 uh, where the trillion dollar market cap was reached, then it's going to be $1.5 trillion in market cap for Apple in this case. It's going to have added, it will have added in that short period of time from October, $500 billion in valuation. Did Apple do anything through its innovation to reach that valuation? Did it change something in its business model that made it go up $500 billion in valuation? Or was it the peak of a market cycle and the funny money that the Fed has printed into the economy, reaching its later stage in an overall equity cycle? Take a look at Microsoft. Similar situation. From that same period of time, Microsoft has climbed up here from this time period in October, up nearly almost 20%, around 17.8%. From its current valuation down here, that means that it easily added over $200 billion here over the last few weeks, or excuse me, the last few months if we're talking about October. Did it do anything to really deserve that or change its business model to equal that valuation? No, it's the peak of a market cycle. So my point in all of this, I know I rambled on and kind of went on a small tangent here. This, again, plays into another factor here for crypto markets. Every single market, whether it is property markets, equities, you know, bond markets. We can take a look at TLT, for example. Take a look at uh, bond markets here, right? Bond markets overextended on the higher end of the channel here when we're taking a look at U.S. Treasuries. If you take a look across other government bonds or other types of commercial bonds, bonds are overextended. They've been in a bull market for the last few decades. So if we're taking all these things in combination, right, we have all these positive factors going for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We take a look at global markets and we see that practically every single market is overextended outside of gold and silver right now, which are actually quite cheap, but still outperforming the S&P 500 as they've started to set higher lows, we now have to ask ourselves, where are we going to position ourselves, right? Where's the place to park our capital at the moment? 
Now, you guys are going to have to determine that for yourself. I'm not going to try to determine where you should put your money. I'm not your money manager. And along with that as well, you coming here to this channel is a, a component of your journey of you know becoming your own investor and your own trader if you so choose to, right? But for me, I'm excessively positioned in Bitcoin. I'm highly anticipating the future of where Bitcoin's going here. I like the momentum I'm seeing. I definitely want to see more volume follow through. But taking a look at the longer term picture for Bitcoin here on the Brave New Coin Liquid Index, taking a look at the monthly, right? Turning off the indicators here, just simply taking a look at price. We are in the channel as expected. We made contact like we've had multiple times back here during the previous cycle. But it's time for us to start moving higher in anticipation for the halving event later on in May of this year and hopefully new all time highs in 2021. I'm very excited for this, guys. I think we've got a lot of interesting things coming up here in the market with all the fundamental changes going on on the Bitcoin network and the uh, Ethereum network through DeFi and a lot of the exciting applications finally coming out into fruition that really have to do with financial markets and store value. I think that we've got a lot of potential for cryptocurrencies to grow here in the next couple of months and over the next few years. And I'm going to be sure as hell here helping you guys throughout the process, trying to guide you all through this market, teaching you all what I can about cryptocurrencies and finance and uh, enjoying it all at the same time. So if you guys like this video, drop a like. And again, as I mentioned, if you enjoyed this and you think it'd be relevant to kind of, you know, showcase to people where we are right now in crypto markets, share with a friend or family member. I think it'd be very relevant. All right. Hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are. And I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.